Hey guys, we've got a massive iPhone 11 update to talk about. But first off, I just wanted to say thank you for all the suggestions on the names. There were three that I liked the most. And this guy perfectly fits Loki. I like that one. And then Ghost was a pretty good one and Rocco. So out of those three, which ones do you guys think is the best fit for him? Um, but anyways, we've got a lot to talk about. Let's jump right in. So it's been a few weeks since my last leaks update and understandably in that time there's been a lot of news. We're fast approaching the release. We've got a little bit over a month to go. So in this video we're going to be talking about everything that's happened in between including the final release date, a bunch of new features and finalizations about the release. And sadly I have no more renders to offer you guys for a few more days. Uh, I fried my old motherboard completely. We had the six core processor and we just ran that thing to the ground. So I ordered the new Threadripper from AMD, the second gen, and I'm very excited about the improvements we're gonna be making to our renders. It should be so much better from here on out. Well, I, I hope so, and uh, so hopefully we'll have some higher quality renders going forward. And believe it or not, history does tend to repeat itself. Apple has leaked the all new iPhone 10 Plus on their own without the help of leakers, or well, maybe a little bit, digging through the code of iOS 12 beta 5, there was a glyph that was discovered that looks just like the iPhone 10 Plus. It's the larger display, the notch is a little bit different in design, and it basically confirms that this device is coming. And this glyph appears on iOS when you pay for something through the wallet app using that Apple Pay animation. It's just kind of funny. It's, it's very ironic that Apple leaked the iPhone 10 in the very same manner last year. They went through this whole crazy leak purge this year, and yet they still leak it in the exact same way before the final release. So I thought that was kind of uh, funny. And um, yeah, maybe next year they'll release the all new ones as well in iOS 13. And this is quite interesting. The iPhone 10 Plus has been confirmed to support landscape orientation, much like the iPads and the iPhone Plus series, where if you put it into landscape, certain applications will have a slightly different interface. So iHelp BR has actually plugged in the new resolution of the iPhone 10 Plus, and they were able to find that many of the stock applications are already supporting this function on a larger resolution of 2688 by 1242 of the iPhone 10 Plus. Apps like the contact application and calendar application is more expansive, you see more on the display. It's really going to be great to not have to sacrifice display size and have smaller content just to get the OLED display and of course all the other functions with the iPhone 10. And I believe because of this leak it also does confirm that landscape face ID will be coming because if you're going to be using an application in that landscape orientation, you lock your phone, you're going to want to unlock your phone in landscape to have a seamless experience to start using that app again from the lock screen instead of having to always rotate your device. Hopefully Apple thought of that and Landscape Face ID will be coming. But also this site plugged in a bunch of other applications into the simulator and it gives us an idea of how several other apps will look, including the health app, calendar, uh, messages, even the keyboard. It's just slightly larger basically, might be easier to type even. The maps, photos, uh, we've got news and the watch app which shows that you can see more of your content. It just kind of stretches it out in a good way I'd say. And supposedly the 6.1 inch iPhone 9 model has leaked and this is the first picture of it. Not so, not so fast. This is an iPhone 8 with an edited flash module. It does look a little bit different with that black color, doesn't look so much space gray, but this is most likely a fake. So that's not our first look at it. So the 6.1 inch iPhone will be coming in a new variety of colors, but now which colors are up for dispute? Maka Takara has actually released a new article talking about the color choices, and they do differ from Ming Chi Ko's, which he did predict earlier would be coming in a different variety. So Maka Takara is saying it'll come in a white finish a black finish, flash yellow, a bright orange, an electric blue, and those might not be the descriptions of the color, but that's basically what it's gonna be, and also a top color, which is a brownish, goldish look. Now, Ming-Chi Ko's predictions earlier were a gold, a gray, a white color, blue, red, and orange. So they do have some similar colors, but what can't be agreed upon is that yes, the 6.1 inch iPhone will be coming in a wide variety of colors. Only the concept by the Apple Hub looks great, so instead of just this boring white, it gives you a really great idea of how the other colors will look and they look very very similar to Apple's style so it's a slightly different shade slightly different color palette but I do like it so if I were to get one of those it would most likely be the top brownish color and we've got some bad news regarding the 6.1 inch iPhone 9 series a Morgan Stanley analyst is saying that Apple will be delaying the release by about a month so going into October instead of September with the iPhone 10 and 10 plus and this is because of some production issues with the LCD display
displays. You know, they are doing a new style for them entirely, so it's kind of expected they might run into some issues. And what's going on is that they're having some light leakage, possibly around the edges. And because of that, of course, they want to make sure the standards are up to par for the consumer and they're going to be delaying it into October. They're all going to be announced at the same time still in September with the iPhone 10 and 10 Plus. Those will be released on time without delay, but the iPhone 9 will go into October. So this is like a reverse last year. The budget and model that everyone's going to want is actually being pushed back and the more expensive ones are being offered first. An interesting choice on Apple's part. So Cirrus Logic is saying that this adapter included in the box of current iPhones will not be included in the 2018 iPhones due to the future. They're saying that Apple wants to mitigate that gap between a wireless world and the current world we have now where we use adapters. So I personally think, of course, it's to increase their profit margins. This is a $9 adapter. I know it's not much. It's just the principle of including it in the box versus going out and having to buy it yourself. So that will not be included, probably to bring you a slightly cheaper iPhone. And that new 18 watt USB-C fast charger will not be sold separately at first. Anyways, you'll only be able to get one with the new 2018 iPhones as Mac Takara is saying Apple is not able to produce enough to sell on the side, only to put in the boxes of the iPhones they sell. And because of that move to USB-C on the power adapters, an unexpected change is that third party ones are going to be very hard to make and might as a result get more expensive. This is because there's new authorizations in order to keep it more secure against software and hardware attacks. Now USB-C may be coming to the iPhone and iPad sooner than you think for a very weird reason. The European Union is getting kind of upset that Apple doesn't want to switch to their standard and they're looking into some sort of action into making that happen, such as even possibly, but most likely not, preventing them from selling their iPhones until they do or conform to their standard in one way or another, like including an adapter or something. And this is because 51,000 tons of old chargers and cables are thrown away every year when people switch between phones, different standards. So they want to make it one standard and uh, it might actually force Apple to add USB-C. But how funny would it be if they just skipped it all together just to spite them and go into that wireless future that we talked about earlier without any ports whatsoever. So previously it was rumored that dual SIM would be coming to the iPhone 10 plus and the 6.1 inch in certain regions. Now a new rumor is saying that it will only be coming to the 6.1 inch iPhone and only in China because there are potentially three to four billion customers around the globe, mostly in China that use this functionality. And it'd be nice to have, you know, traveling overseas, not having to swap SIM cards, just having two, maybe just have one for business, have one for your phone. It'd be a nice feature. Why does Apple have to limit it just to China? Now it's not likely that this contributed to the delay of the iPhone 9 at all, but it certainly doesn't help. TSMC, the producer of the chips for the iPhone, has actually got a virus that shut down certain portions of the company for a day, some over a day. This was a wanna cry type variant of the virus and it got into the framework after installing some software through a distributor. And they said this doesn't commonly happen, which I hope it doesn't. So they're implementing some new strategies so it doesn't happen in the future. And TSMC is also very optimistic about the sales of this year's iPhone. They have a lot of orders incoming and they're actually kind of leaning on the iPhone to save their company because they branched off into some cryptocurrency processors that didn't go so well. Now the iPhone is their saving grace. And many analysts are all agreeing that this year is the one. The iPhone 9, the 6.1 inch model, is going to be the winner when it comes to sales. And in some other news, there are some new technologies that have surfaced that may eventually find their way into future iPhones relatively soon. First off is Gorilla Glass 6. And this one is one I'm very excited about. You know, who doesn't want a more durable phone? I'm actually kind of surprised that the iPhone 10 wasn't as durable as I expected it to be. A Gorilla Glass 6 may remedy that in the future. Apparently it offers protection at one meter, 15 drops in most cases. So it took 15 drops to break the display on average from one meter. And that's a very, very good ratio. That's twice as durable as Gorilla Glass 5. Next up, Sony has released an insane 48 megapixel sensor to be used in smartphones, potentially the future iPhones as they do supply these sensors for the current iPhone 10 right now. That's important because it's the smallest sensor and the highest megapixel size. And this is achieved with a 0.8 micrometer pixel size, which means it might do worse in low light photography, but in general, the resolution will be better. They're also saying that the dynamic range has been improved greatly. So when you're taking a picture of somebody behind the sun or a very brightly lit object, both the sun will be lit up, the blue sky and your subject at the same time. That's one of my gripes with the iPhone right now. It doesn't do dynamic range very well. It's either one or the other. You don't get both. Oh, and did I mention 4K at 90 frames per second? I don't know why you'd need that, but that is awesome. And believe it or not, iPhones will not be getting cheaper. Get used to more and more expensive iPhones and potentially a $1,200 iPhone 10 Plus this year. As one analyst
analyst is saying that because Apple got away with the price for the iPhone 10, they had some record breaking sales. In fact, they see that people are willing to pay that much for a premium phone. And as a result, you know, not only because of this, but because of tariffs and component costs, you know, the actual materials they use, the Sapphire, the stainless steel, the internals, Apple's going to be raising the price here on out on new iPhones. So definitely do not expect them to get cheaper. And finally, the event date. When can we expect Apple to announce this year's new iPhones? Cena has done some great deductions regarding, you know, past dates, you know, thinking about the holidays and whatnot, and gave us an exact date for when Apple will be releasing these new iPhones. And they say it is September 12th. Some of their logic is that Apple doesn't have this event in the second half of the month. There are some holidays getting in the way. Obviously, they wouldn't do it on September 11th. They like to do it on Tuesday. So September 12th definitely makes sense. It's the same date as last year's release too. And they predict the street sale date will be on September 21st. That is for the iPhone 10 and 10 Plus. The iPhone 9 6.1 inch model may come again in October. All right, guys. So there it is. That is everything we know about this year's upcoming iPhones. Very exciting. We've got just one month to go. I'll keep you informed on any info we learn in between. I expect there to be some pretty big leaks. I hope anyways. I mean, last year was insane. If you really think about it, how much we were learning before the phones were coming out. But I got to say this year is not too bad. I mean, we know everything almost about the upcoming 6.1 inch. I'd be very surprised if there was anything really surprising that Apple gives us at the event. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned.